So I am very lucky to have Amara from the Well State with me today. And um, we're looking forward to having a bit of a chat about wellness, um, mindfulness, and how she juggles that with her own business, the Well State, as well as being a brand um, creator for the Bloom app. So welcome, Amara. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Oh, it's so great to have you and finally be able to see you um, in an interview, even though we are, you know, in the same town, five um, more than five k's away lockdown though. No. And so I'd love to hear something about your free time, things that you like to do in your free time. Well, I'm lucky enough to be married to a builder. So he, in the first lot of lockdown last year, built me a greenhouse. So I have a very big collection of plants and spend uh, countless hours and countless money to <laughs> on, um, on my plant collection. So it's a really great um, grounding activity that I do, but also um, just a really good hobby to be able to, you know, tend to the plants and watch them grow and be in that beautiful greenhouse um, space. Um, and it's also good too because my daughter will spend time in there with me and she has a selection of little plants as well. So it's kind of teaching her about looking after them and the responsibility of plants and, and patience of watching them grow and um, even just repotting them and things like that. So we have a great time out there with that. Oh, it's beautiful. I've seen your greenhouse on Instagram. So yeah, yeah Instagram stories, it looks, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's looking so lush at the moment just being the time of year that it is and um, just how humid it is in there. Mm. They're just all going crazy. So, and I've managed to kick out all the vegetables now so that they're all outside growing. So it's just all my stuff. So it's pretty good. <laughs> and what about, do they make their way into the house as well? The plants, yes. Yeah. I've got one at my desk here. Oh, gorgeous. That I propagated that. Um, my desk is pretty full of plants at the moment too. Oh, what a beautiful, that's so motivating to have plants all around you. And um, gifts, actually, like I'll, I've got a few kind of varieties that are really easy to propagate. Mm. So I often have a whole heap of them in little terracotta pots at, rather than giving people, you know, normal flowers or chocolates or whatever, um, I usually pop over with a little plant. You know, if I'm invited for dinner somewhere or something yeah. like that, I'll give them a plant. So it's oh, beautiful. They keep giving to. Yeah, they do, don't they? I love when they get little babies like this one behind me and yeah, yeah just plant it. And it's looking amazing now, actually. It's amazing how quick some of them can, yeah, can grow and propagate as well, isn't it? Yep. So what about your morning? What does your morning routine look like? So I'm not really one for strict morning routines. Um, I like fluidity in my day. But one thing that is a non-negotiable is um, music. So we have music in our house all the time. Um, it kind of started, well, I've always had music, but it really started when my daughter was young and I had these expectations of her being able to get herself ready for school and while I was getting myself ready for work, which we all know. <laughs> so, and one thing that I found we would argue over was that she was watching TV in the mornings while I was getting ready. And um, obviously she would be sitting there glued to the TV and wasn't dressed, hadn't had her breakfast, all that kind of stuff. And that was triggering me. And I, I then had to take a step back and say, why do I expect a five-year-old to be able to do this? Like, this is ridiculous. So we started having music play all the time. So we either listen to the radio or a streaming service or pick an album. And so from when we wake up in the morning, um, like I've got a little cordless stereo thing, yeah. you know, the speakers. Yeah. Um, so when I'm in the shower, I've got that with me and then that comes into the kitchen and the whole time we've got music and then that then alleviates any arguing in the morning. And then that's also streamed through into our afternoon. So we don't have TV in our house until Friday. So it's a Friday morning treat. She can get up and watch TV before school as long as she's dressed and has breakfast. 
they're the thing so then we don't <laughs> argue over it um but we have music playing all the time so even um when she gets home from school and um we're having dinner there's always music um and then it means like if there's a good song we'll dance even this morning we went and did a click and collect and I introduced her to Kylie Minogue and we were <laughs> dancing in the car and I was watching people like laughing at us and <laughs> it's good it's light-hearted right like it really yeah. lifts the tone so that really is my non-negotiable all the time is background music and especially you know in those times where other things are happening and you're getting pulled in different directions it's one of those constants that kind of I don't know, for me, it's a really good mindful tool mm. because you can kind of drop into that music and, um, yeah, and just kind of have a dance here and there if you need as well. Yeah, it's great, isn't it, that being able to use a different style or the t- t- different tempo to be able to change the mood as well. You want yeah. that boppy feel or if it's more chilled, I suppose it's more like a, um, as my kids say, the yoga music. Can you get that <laughs> yoga music off, Mum? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> And so is there anything else that you do for yourself in the mornings? Um, uh, look, apart from, you know, having the music going, I like to move in the morning. So whether that's walking, whether that's going to the gym, whether it's doing some yoga, again, it's not a set time. So often I'll do my morning activities with Quincy and then drop her to school and then I'll come home and do something or get into my work. And then about 11 o'clock, I'll head to the gym. So it depends Mm. on what's happening on the day. Uh, Because otherwise I find, for me personally, if I have that set structure, I feel too claustrophobic with it. I need to be able to just let it flow. Um, I really enjoy being able to see, I have a beautiful front window room. Um, and I'll often sit in the window and have my breakfast and just let the sun stream in and kind of have that few moments of mindfulness before I get too far into the day. Um, and then I like to have it cause I work from home all the time. So for me, it's really important to have set breaks, um, mm. cause otherwise you can just keep working all the time. Whereas if you're in an office, you know, you'll go and chat at someone's desk or you'll go walk up the street for a coffee. So I like to uh, go out into the greenhouse at lunchtime and really get grounded again. Um, And often I'll be mindful either there or I've got a beautiful oak tree that's one of the oldest in Geelong actually in my backyard. So um, I will sit under that and just have a few mindful moments. So they're kind of the non-negotiables that happen. Mm, with no set real time frame yeah yeah just it's more of a ritual rather than a routine yeah Yeah. so then talk about your business so the wealth state and how you got into or how you came about that's such a long story (laughs) really quick um so when my daughter was about two and a half three um my anxiety really peaked to the point where I could no longer function as a, your average person would. So the biggest um, wake up call for me was one day when I was going to my mother-in-law's house to pick her up from being um, looked after. And I went to drive into the driveway and I had to just keep driving. I was just too anxious to stop and pick her up. And then I drove around the block again and was so wound up I couldn't get out of the car and drove around the block again and it just and then I realized I actually regardless of whether I could physically pull up and get out of the car and get her I I really couldn't drive with her in that state so I got my husband to come and pick her up and I'd had anxious moments and periods throughout my life um, that I had managed to kind of keep a lid on but never really faced the root cause of it And because, you know, when you have children, it's not about you anymore. You really have to face those. You got to, I like to say, you know, it's like a a wildfire, a bushfire coming towards you. You have to turn around and face the fire. And as as uncomfortable as that is, if you don't turn and stop, it just keeps coming after you. So I uh, turned and I stopped and faced the fire. So I did all the things that, um, you know, you need to do first by going to my GP, seeing a psychologist, um, all of those things. And then 
I needed to start moving. So I couldn't go. I was too anxious to go to a gym or even just walk around the block. So I hired a treadmill and just started doing that and looked at my diet and started changing the way I was eating. And that led to seeing a naturopath and an acupuncturist. And so I started to really combine Eastern and Western modalities um, and saw a really big change over, and I think this is really important, a long period of time mm. because there is no magic yep. pill. No. I have to turn and face that fire. And I think that's really important because a lot of people in the wellness industry will turn around and say, you know, do this and that and you'll be fine. And, and yeah, that's true. But it took me 18 months. Mm. It wasn't a short process. But the more that I did it and the more I saw the results, so I was talking to my friends about it and one of them said to me, you got to go do something about this. You have to make this your career. And I was like, what do you mean? What am I going to say? <laughs> so this was, uh, you know, quite a few years ago now. And I just happened to be searching like wellness and well-being and all of that. And the postgraduate degree at RMIT popped up and it closed that day. And so I thought, oh, I'm not really an academic. What should I do? So I got in, even though my background is in PR and marketing and this is, was the health science department. And I had no degree to, I've got a degree, but it's in arts. So I had to write this compelling letter to be able to be accepted. Um, and then that led into being qualified in a range of things, but having that postgrad grad research. Um, and then alongside that, I did a wellness coaching certificate as well. And, but I mean, the postgrad had it, in there mm. that was quite in depth coaching as well. And so then I got into one on one coaching and was coaching clients for probably close to two years. Um, that was what I was doing all the time. And then um, because I've got such a strong corporate background in a range of things, it's so surprising. So, PR and marketing, advertising, and procurement of all things. Um, so, I've got a really, and I went it before, you know, before having Quincy, I was um, quite successful in procurement. So, and it's very strict and very corporate. Uh, so I was be able to then pull all of those skills and understand the corporate arena or landscape uh, and then work in um, workplace wellbeing. So being mm -hmm. able to write wellbeing strategies for businesses and engage their employees on a different level um, than what they had known before. Um, so that has been really fulfilling. Uh, working with some really big businesses, doing lots of keynote speaking, speaking with some amazing people, um, well-known personalities and all those things. Like it's very, lots of pinch myself moments. <laughs> um, and then that then moved into working with um, two amazing women, Molly and Chloe, who own an app called Bloom. Uh, so I'm now their brand manager and content curator for the app. Um, so I get to manage the brand and the social media and the marketing. So it brings all of those mm -hmm. um, skills into it, as well as uh, all of the teachers, the content, the themes that we do and the back end business side of the app as well. So it's pretty cool to be able to do that. Yeah. And that ex ex my home office. Yeah, and that's a, that, you know, your experience, isn't it amazing how we get into those areas, but then finally you get to the, the spot where, yes, this is exactly what I like, but it takes that, you know, those other trialing, those other parts, like the individual coaching, the same for myself. Um, but I missed not being around people, like going from teaching, you know, full-time to then coaching online, one-on-one. -on -one. I was like, this isn't as... I love the topic, but I don't necessarily love this. I miss the bigger, you know, the group of people. And so, yeah, just slowly moving into those areas and using your strengths, which is exactly what you've done yes. to get to where you are now. Yeah. So what is it that you love about, about your work now and where you are? Oh, there's so many facets of what I love. So touching on the well state, so that still continues. Um, that's kind of more of a... Um, passion project now. Mm -hmm. So I really love the one-on-one -on -one mindful mentoring that I do with really successful, 
high caliber corporates that mm. I can just crack open and help them find their center uh, because a lot of them are real type A, you know, obsessed yeah. with the outcome, but not really stopping to smell the roses, so to speak. So, yeah. and, and the best part about that is that they're so outcome driven that they want to do everything they can like to tick all the boxes along the way. So they're very, very engaged. Um, but the amazing thing is, is that often when they start, they don't really have much of, a, of an opinion for mindfulness. And so then by going through all of the strategies, by giving them my lived experience, as well as the evidence that supports it, which is what is really important, mm. right? Like you can't just say, mm. oh, I'm this. It's giving them the evidence-based um outcomes that they then can say oh okay this isn't just a gimmick mm. and no so it's that persuasive strategy that you can get through with them so that's really amazing and I still do that with some big businesses um I do one-on-one -on -one with those clients yep. and then in terms of my you know salaried job I guess being with Bloom my employment uh I just can't even begin to tell you how grateful I am for that and like what my favorite parts of that are. So getting to have amazing conversations with amazing people who are just so willing to share their well-being knowledge. Um, it's not lost on me how grateful I am for that role. Like, they, and so many people in this industry work so hard to get to where I am um, and, you know, want to be in that role. And here I am living that every day. And it's just, it's incredible. It's incredible. Some of the conversations I have. Um, but then also knowing that the outcome for that is, is really how positively we're impacting people's lives yeah. in a really approachable way, which is what Bloom is. Um, being able to break down those barriers to have, you know, long and short meditations, to be able to have it on lots mm. of different topics, mindful movement, you know, um, the app even has like little mini games in it so that people can, if they want to be doing things, they can mindfully be playing games rather mm. than scrolling the social media or whatever. So, yeah, there's so many things that I'm really grateful for and that I love so much about my role. Um and mostly being able to take Quincy to school every day and pick her up, you know, and being able to be mum and um, Amara, the the worker as well, mm. is really important yeah. to me. Um, and both Molly and Chloe absolutely support that. So it's really great to have that whole combination. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Tap that how you talked about the app like I just love some of the listening to the different people's stories and how they got into their wellness you know niche that they're doing on the bloom app is one of my favorite things it's like oh who am I going to listen to today and and just listening to their stories it's really inspiring and yeah and then you can sort of understand why they're so passionate about that particular area um, yeah. yeah, which is great. So, yeah, I could imagine that role being really fulfilling. So good, in, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Just, I think, too, just seeing the kindness of the community mm. of teachers that we have, you know, with this snap lockdown that we've got in Victoria at the moment, I spent a couple of hours just reaching out to a few people um, on the weekend to create a schedule through the week just mm. to be able to help people in Victoria or wherever they are in mm. lockdown. And um, the few people that I reached out to were just so willing to do it, to give up their time, to give up their lunch breaks or after work or whatever it was, to be able to positively impact the people that we have uh, on the social media platform. And I just think that's so brilliant. And it just mm -hmm. shows you that they really are living and breathing what they are saying. You know, yeah. like, there's a lot of people to uh, just about the financial transactions, which you know, having my own business, I don't go to speaking gigs for free either. So I get that. Yeah. But I also want to, I, I want to, I know the impact of what I did by taking mm. responsibility for my health and well-being, how that changed my life. And if I can impart just a little bit of that or just 
have someone out there know that they're not alone in their mental health journey Mm. then no amount of money can pay me what that's worth yeah definitely yeah so what about your top tips so have you got any top health and wellness tips how much time have you got (laughs) a couple of minutes (laughs) Um, I have to say uh definitely doing something every day to help your mental well-being is so important and the main thing about that and this is what I speak about when I'm doing my mindful mentoring is that we think that when when we need to be mindful when we need to look after our mental well-being that we have to set time aside and you know, Mm. sit under a pyramid and meditate, you know, whatever it is. Like, that's really cool, like, if that's what you're called to do. But for me, I think the most practical and approachable way of doing that or to to create a habit is to add to what you're already doing. So, you know, if you really enjoy cooking, make that a mindful Mm. moment, make that process really mindful So feel the cool of the refrigerator when you open it. Just stop for a minute and just be present in that moment. How the cool, you know, stainless steel of the fridge Mm -hmm. feels in your hands. The heat of the burners. Don't put your hands on it, of course. (laughs) You know, ambient heat. Um, You know, just what, you know, if you're peeling carrots, what that feels like. You know, those things. If you want to put music on, listen to the music. How does that make you feel? So you're already doing that. It's just switching that, that well, flicking the switch, not mm. switching the switch. Um, you know, a lot of people have got pets. So use your pets to be mindful. Most mornings when I wake up, our dog sleeps in the bedroom with us on the floor, not in the bed. Um, and she usually I'll wake up around the same time as her and I reach out and give her a little scratch and I just think about, you know, her fur under my fingers you know, what her ears feel like, those kind of things, you know, just Mm. pets are a really great way to be mindful. Obviously my obsession with my plants um, and (laughs) gardening and all of that is a really good one. But even if you don't have a greenhouse, which most people don't, um, so many people have indoor plants now. So Mm. what the leaves feel like, you know, when you're cleaning the leaves of them, do it mindfully. When you're watering, do it mindfully. Um, so my main tip around your mental well-being or anything that you're doing is to look at what your day-to-day life is and then add to that. Don't necessarily feel like you have to create or carve mm-hmm. out this time that maybe doesn't exist, whereas because you've got those blockers to that, whereas if you want to do more exercise, eat better, be mindful, whatever your end goal is, what are you doing now and how can you just add on to that? Because sure enough, you'll realise how good you feel by making that little change that, that miraculously you'll find time in your calendar to carve out to do something more. Mm, definitely. So that would be my number one thing is to really take a step back Look at what you're doing and how can you add to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's because the main blocker is time, isn't it? Everyone will say, oh, but I don't have time. It's like, yeah, you're already doing it. Just yeah. how can you be more mindful? Yeah. yeah. Do, do you find too from your yoga um, that that's helped you become more mindful as well or be more in touch with it? Is that sort of the connection for you? Um, to be fair, my yoga teacher training actually for me it changed my mindset completely from a philosophical point of view so I really viewed the world so differently once I did that um obviously mindfulness is quite the um quite a main ingredient in that but I was already being quite mindful prior to that what yoga brought to me was first and foremost the appreciation of my body Mm. whether it's what I can do on the mat at the time or if I'm struggling through a class what I can look back and say well you know not so long ago my body could do x y and z 
the strength and flexibility of that. And now I, I'm challenged in some way, but I can still appreciate where I was and where I can go with it. Um, Cause inevitably the more you practice, the more you can, you know, the more challenges come up in you mm-hmm. and the ego of, well, especially being a teacher, why can't I just go do a handstand or why can't I go into wheel pose unassisted or, and I know that I've got those mental blockers and the fear of it. So then how do I, you know, leave that ego aside and meet myself where I'm at yeah. on that particular day for that particular practice? So there was that with my teacher training, but mainly, mainly for me, it was a profound change in mindset and it was like a lens changed for me uh, it, philosophically, really. Yeah. I really encourage anyone that is able to um, to do a teacher training, not necessarily to be a teacher, but the philosophy that you learn mm. is really incredible. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? And yeah. So, yeah, definitely agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for your time. What? Where can people find you, like your Instagram or website for both uh, the Bloom so- and, yeah. Oh, I've got my well, at the well state being yeah. my primary Instagram account and I've got a website which is the well state and then often you'll find me over at bloom chatting on the socials about what's coming up or um yeah whatever content we've, we're curating for the week um there's a great team of us now um so yeah usually there and then I'm working on a cool new project with the team so that'll be announced soon um, so yeah, stay on my socials for that too, because that's going to be pretty cool. And you can see Mara's beautiful greenhouse as well too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Amara. Pleasure.